3006 USMC Semper Fi Get Her Done had asked, you mentioned that you're a driver. Is that yours? It's beautiful. Yes, it is. And what he's referring to is this Florida Peterbilt right here. Unfortunately, no, that is not mine. Although my first truck that I owned was, in fact, a Peterbilt. It was an all-white one. And I owned it for about three months in early 2006, January, February, and March to be exact. I owned it until I bought my second truck, which is this truck here. I bought this truck in April of 2006 and I owned it until last year when I gave it back to the guy that I bought it from, which incidentally is also the same guy that I bought the white Peterbilt from. I bought both my trucks from the same guy. I worked for him as a company driver and then I became an owner operator for him in 2006. At first I bought the white Peterbilt from him and then he offered me this truck here which was a 1998 Freightliner Century. And like I said, I owned that truck for 14 years, up until last year, as a matter of fact, when I gave it back to him. Now, I do need to point out that that truck and trailer are both mine. However, I did not take that trailer coast to coast. I only use that trailer for local work. The trailer that I took coast to coast is similar to the one that Florida Peterbilt has. Uh, I pulled a 48-foot spread axle. And you truckers will know what I'm talking about. It was a utility 48 foot spread axle. It had a Thermo King reefer. Um, it had the stainless steel diamond pattern doors on the back. And it had a cowbell on the back bumper. So like I said, you truckers, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it was a damn nice truck. I do have pictures of it, but unfortunately I don't have access to those pictures at this time because they're sitting on a hard drive that is malfunctioning on me. But I will make it a point to, at some point next year, to get that hard drive repaired and, and get some shots off of there because there's actually quite a bit of stuff that I want off that hard drive and some of those pictures of my truck are one of them but I do have pictures of it with the 48 foot spread axle and I also have pictures of it with a 53 foot Great Dane trailer not a spread but also a reefer and these were the trailers that I used to drive around the country with uh, particularly to Texas Florida and the West Coast, particularly California, San Joaquin Valley, Indio, Palm Springs, Hollister, which is the um, uh, Northern California area, San Francisco and all that. But just a personal side note, I had originally or I had intended to start a blog about my trucking adventures. Now this is going back a couple of years. This is actually going back, I would probably say before I started this particular channel, uh, trains 21 or at least at the same time because at the time I was setting up blogs that dealt with the things that I was involved in at that time and by the way this is kind of a side note and I realize I'm rambling a little bit here and I'll, I'll rectify that in just a second but I do need to point this out because I don't know how many people realize this but the name of this channel is actually trains in the 21st century okay that is the name of this channel it's trains in the 21st century I just call it Trains 21 because it's easier. But hey, call it what you like. The next question comes from Peyton24 who asked about my thoughts of the CNOTP. Well, I don't know a whole lot about the CNOTP. I mean, I've seen the railroad itself hundreds of times, you know, in my cross country travels. And in fact, I do remember catching a train on the CNOTP. I was delivering north of Knoxville in a little small town. In fact, I, I don't even know if you would even want to call it a small town. It was just rural Tennessee. And a couple hundred feet away was the CNOTP. And I do remember a southbound train moving by with a high hood SD40-2 on the point. Now, we're going back over 10 years now. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a picture of it. But that's the only train that I can remember seeing on the CNOTP. I am planning to rail fan the CNOTP in 2022. So if anybody out there lives near the CNOTP or at least knows about it and wouldn't mind showing me the railroading on that line. I mean, I'm familiar with some of the trains. You mentioned, uh, Peyton, you mentioned that we used to share 178 and 179. Now, I'm not familiar with those train symbols either on the CNOTP or coming through here. However, from 2005 to 2015, that 10 year period, I did not rail fan the Sunbury line because that's when I was driving trucks. Well, I mean, I've, I've been driving trucks since 1993. Uh, 1994 to be exact new I started driving trucks New Year's Day 1994 but I was driving cross-country in that 10-year period and I did not rail fan the Sunbury line or Northeastern Pennsylvania for that matter not one iota 
in 10 years I did not rail fan anything in the local area so that's something to keep in mind there so if there was a 178 or 179 running through here at that time I wouldn't have known about it and I certainly didn't see it as far as 170 and 171 are concerned I am familiar with those two train symbols but only through the videos of other people not because I've actually seen them myself now this comment here really left me laughing because it's, th it's, it's times like this that I'm reminded that there's some pretty sharp-eyed people out there. So I have to keep that in mind. But as you can see for yourself, it says, Did anybody notice the trash being thrown out of the cab as they went under the bridge? Now what he's talking about is this train here. Now watch closely as, it, as the locomotive goes under the bridge. In regards to this comment, the truth of the matter is, both of you are sort of kind of right. And I'll explain. What the conductor was throwing out of the out of the train was not trash. It was bottled water. And yes, it was for the, for the uh, homeless that live under the bridge. Remember that this shot was taken in June. And it was extremely hot out. So what the conductor was doing was actually an act of benevolence and kindness. By sharing their water, their crew water, with the homeless and the reason why I know it was bottles of water was because yes I saw them throw it out as the train went by and I and after the train went by I went and I checked to see what it was and it was in fact bottles of water if you didn't know uh, one of the nice things that the railroad does for its crews at least the class ones anyway is gives them little bottles of water to keep with them in the cab to stay hydrated on hot days and stuff like that so again that's what they threw from the cab that's what the conductor threw from the cab. It was bottles of water to keep the homeless hydrated. So kudos to you, Tim Trudgeon Jr. That's who the conductor was on that train. Now locals know exactly who Tim Trudgeon Jr. is because his father, Tim Trudgeon Sr., also works for Norfolk Southern as a conductor. However, Tim Trudgeon Jr. no longer works for NS. He is now a locomotive engineer for the Delaware Lackawanna. Last but never least, we have David Barnett chiming in to us from the great state of Texas. And as I'm rambling along here, I'll, I'll let you read his comment, but he starts off talking about the uh, reporting marks, particularly the Seminole Gulf Railroad. Now, if you're a subscriber to Danny Harmon, uh, who goes by Distant Signal on YouTube, and I'm sure you are, he's talked about this railroad in past videos of his. And I'm actually kind of glad that you brought this up, Dave, because this gives me an opportunity to bring shed some light on a little detail that I put in a video that I unfortunately was not able to bring attention to at that time. So I'll take this opportunity to bring attention to it now. 11R runs from East Deerfield, Massachusetts to Binghamton, New York. 11Z runs from Binghamton, New York to Enola, Pennsylvania. 13R runs from Enola, Pennsylvania to Linwood, North Carolina. From Linwood, blocks of freight can move on to other trains to major terminals like the Sevier Yard in Knoxville, Tennessee by way of the S-Line or go further deep south to the large yards at Macon, Georgia and Jacksonville, Florida in the NS connection with the Florida East Coast. From the yards, blocks or even individual cars can proceed further to even smaller yards and or regional and short lines for delivery to their final destinations. This gives you an exhausting but accurate look at how freight moves over the NS system. Did you notice that block of three Seminole Gulf cars during the last, I don't know, five or ten seconds of that video clip? I put them there intentionally because Seminole Gulf is fairly common through this area on the north-south trains, particularly the 11Z and the, well, now 12Z. Also, I, I need to point out that some of the information in that video, in that video clip has since changed, okay? This video clip was done two years ago. And as you know, or as you may know, the uh, the 14R is no more now. It's been abolished. It's now the 12Z. For about a week or two, a few months back, it was the 14Z, but that didn't last, like I said, but for a week or two. Now it's back to 12Z again. So it, if it's even that, because I haven't seen the train in over a year. I haven't shot any NS trains in more than a year, so just keep that in mind. I have no idea what they're running through the area now. But like I said, I, I wasn't able to bring attention to that little detail that I specifically put those Seminole Gulf cars in that particular point of the video to show them moving southward because those Seminole Gulf cars, more likely than not, 
came off of the 11Z train. And by the way, that train that you were watching in that clip, that was the 13R to, at the time, to Linwood, North Carolina, but that's since changed. I, I can't remember where 13R goes now, but it, it doesn't go to Linwood anymore. At least I don't think it does. Any who's moving along, that was actually a pretty good video. I, I, at least I thought it was a pretty good video. So if you get an opportunity and you haven't seen that video, or you just haven't watched it in a while, you can't remember everything you saw in it, you should go check that video out. It was pretty interesting. Moving along here, he talks also about the Winchester and Western. Now, if you didn't know, there are two Winchester and Western railroads. They're the same company, but they operate two different railroads in two different states. There's one in New Jersey and there's one in Virginia. The one in Virginia is really easy to see because you can see it right from Interstate 81, going south or north. So if you've been wanting to rail fan the Winchester and Western, the one in Virginia, it's very easy to spot.